The Ahmadiyya Muslim community in the United States of America was formally established in 1920 with the arrival of the first missionary, Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Sahib. May Allah be pleased with him. Over the next hundred years, by the grace of Allah, the community has continued to flourish across the country. Today we'll be showing you the state of Texas and taking a look at how the Ahmadiyya Muslim community started from humble beginnings and has now become a positive force in the heart of America. Texas is the second largest state in America and has a population of more than 28 million people. It is an agricultural area with the main industries being oil and farming. Texas possesses three of the top ten most populous cities in the United States, namely Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio. In addition, the city of Austin is an up-and-coming tech hub in the region. The Ahmadiyya community's roots in the state of Texas were established in the 1970s as members moved to the area to pursue their careers and education. A thriving oil industry and expanding medical centers, along with prestigious universities, helped attract Ahmadi professionals and students to the region. They were also motivated by the better quality of life compared to a congested metropolitan area. We start with the city of Houston, the fourth most populous city in the country and famously home to the United States' space exploration missions. In the late 70s, as more and more families moved into the area, the number of Ahmadis was sufficient to form an official Jamaat. In the beginning, there were only six, seven families and the Jamaat was formed uh, um, at the end of probably 1979. We used to meet uh, in general meetings almost in every house. We were going to the small uh, apartments and we, then we were going to the bigger apartments and then the bigger apartments or bigger houses were not able to host uh, the meetings. And then uh, meetings were held in uh, community centers. Uh, after that, uh, uh, Allah gave us an opportunity to get a mission house. You know, we've had all sorts of uh, more rudimentary uh, prayer halls that would flood, uh, whose ceilings would leak. Um, you know, you could hear street sounds inside the mosque during programs and lectures at the podium. Uh, so, uh, and the vakaremal that would come in some of those really basic facilities would be sometimes uh, a, a good challenge for us. Despite these challenges, the Jamaat continued to hold events and eventually grew large enough to start planning for a dedicated mosque to be built. A generous Jamaat member took it upon himself to purchase a five-acre plot of land just north of downtown Houston and donated it to the Jamaat for this purpose. Uh, the construction of this mosque uh, started uh, in uh, 1998. Hazrat uh, Khalifatul Masihur Rabbe Rahmullah laid down the foundation stone of this mosque. This I remind the Ahmadiyya community which is undertaking this uh, very ambitious project of uh, building a house of God here in this facility where actually few, very few Ahmadis live. The mosque in Washington, the central Ahmadiyya mosque in Washington, people thought that it was so big that it would take 10 years for it to be filled. And in the very first year, it was found to be small. And we were amazed at the grace of Allah. So I do believe that this mosque will also be treated by God with the same kindness and benign attitude. So get ready for you to swell in number, but not in ordinary number. Swell in number of worshippers. That is the purpose of building mosques. And that was an amazing experience of first time ever Hazrat Khalifatul Masih coming 
uh, to to Houston. It was hot summer day. I mean, it was I. This is this you know the experience there in the late summer afternoon where Houston temperature is so high. Azal Khubatul Masih, the fourth Ramat Allah came in and laid the foundation of Baitul Sami Mosque. Uh, that was June 30th, 1998. It was so hot and we did the inauguration event in the tent. Everybody was sweating and I even made a comment apologizing to Hazur that weather is so hot. Hazur said, it's not your fault. You know, this is the weather. This is the Houston. So uh, he was very, uh, you know, kind. After this historic event, the Jamaat came together to collect funds to develop the rest of the site. With the uh, donations of Jamaat members, we built... Uh, our uh, residence for our uh, missionary sahib and also two halls for our meetings uh, one for men and one for lajna we have a langar khana a basketball court so from one jamaat building to a full compound uh, as we have now and that was the beginning of what later became this mosque which was inaugurated in 2004 and then later blessed by, by Khalif al Masih with a blessed visit. Hazur opened the curtains, um, and this was uh, in 2018. So, Alhamdulillah, we've been privileged to see two Khulafa visit this mosque. <laughs> Over in Dallas, in the heart of Texas, Ahmadi families were also coming together and beginning to organize themselves into a formal Jamaat. Now, the Jamaat was established in 1890, the official election. I think back then, if there were three families, I think it was allowed to establish a Jamaat. So we had the election, I think the, out of five people, everybody got a position because it was small Jamaat. At that time, we were like 30 or 40 people. They said, we should have our own place because we are in offices or others and others. So because at once their offices were gone, we didn't have a space. And for almost a year, we used to pray Jumas or functions in a hotel a hall or a center or in a house. There was a house we rented it for a year or something. And then, then we, but during that time, we always look for a place. Finally, around 96, because we had a property that we rented for a couple of years, five years or six years, we were renting a property in Car Carrollton. In Carrollton, we rented a place and we were there for five years. But during that time, we were always looking for a property that we are going to be go move permanently. Then we found uh, this land. And there was also a commercial thing with God's help. So, we didn't have any kind of problem. So, I said, let's take it in a way. And the Jamaat said, okay, let's buy it because we had a small budget and we can pay and we can do that. So at that time, in around 96 in March, we bought this land. After purchasing this land, Jamaat members made tremendous sacrifices to raise funds and made the necessary plans for their mosque to be constructed. By the grace of Allah, in 2002, construction commenced on this site. <laughs> اور میں نے تھا لکھا کہ کوئی ہم اینٹ بھی بجا دیں گے تو حضور کا ارشاد آیا کہ اینٹ ہم اپنے صاحب پاس سے دیں گے اور حصہ نے حضر شفقت اس کا نام مسجد بیت الاکرام رکھا تو میری بیوی لندن گئی ہوئی تھی تو حضر صاحب نے اسے کہا کہ تم آئی ہو تو حصہ کو مل کے آنا تو خلیفہ رابع رحمہ کو لانے وہ پھر اس مسجد کے لیے وہ اینٹ پہ دعا کر کے اور ہمیں میرے گھر کے لیے انہوں نے چھوٹی ٹائل پہ دعا کر کے تو انہوں نے اپنے نام لکھ کے تو میری بیوی جب ملنے گئی ایسا کو تو انہوں نے اسے دیا خط خط دیا تھا تو انٹ دی That blessed brick was laid into the ground forming the foundation for the project With such a large plot of land the project had to be divided into multiple phases so that it could be completed in stages When we did the planning Initially, this existing phase was our multi-purpose hall for meetings and all this stuff. But since we didn't have the money, we just built a hall at that time. Now the actual mosque, the phase two is the actual mosque that we are building. At that time, we didn't, because we are now outgrown the existing hall that we had small, right? At that time, we didn't have the fund, but this is now the complete new mosque. 
the new mosque, which is able to hold more than 500 worshippers, has become the new centerpiece for the Jamaat, providing the platform on which they will, God willing, continue to expand. We now take you to Austin, which is Texas's state capital. It is home to the University of Texas at Austin. This is a flagship institution of the University of Texas system and is known for being a leading school of research in the country. The first few members of the Jamaat in Austin were students moving to the area to attend this prestigious university. They were doing all their Juma and everything at the university. We didn't even have a, a slot center or um, at that time a real close by place to do Juma prayers. You know, a lot more families started to come in and they felt they, were, they needed a place. Uh, so initially there was a member here in Austin who used to own a hotel and they would give us one of their conference room and, and that's starting in about 90, 98, 99 and we would do our monthly meetings there. As the Jama'at continued to expand, the need arose for a local mosque that could house worshippers attending daily prayers and religious functions. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Austin was able to purchase an old Baptist church building in the Round Rock area. Once again, local Ahmadis made huge sacrifices to raise the necessary funds to purchase the site and convert it into a mosque. We raised uh, quite a bit within you know, short period of time. And, and that's when we had an experience of uh, small kids coming to, came to me and said, this is $20 I have, this is my savings, I'm giving it to you for the masjid. We had Lajna literally there at the masjid taking their jewelry off and giving to us. There are people who were taking their watches off and they gave us uh, as a donation. So we bought this in 2007 and uh, I believe we got the possession in August and formally started meeting and we had some construction work here to do and then we started meet a meeting um, in September of 2007 and we have been using this place since then. The Jamaat in neighboring San Antonio also benefits from this new mosque, with members regularly traveling to the mosque for joint events. When the families are here, are pretty. Uh, I mean, we have our Jumas, we have our uh, uh, meetings, etc. So we we as a pretty good, decent group. So may Allah Taala uh, uh, increase us both in uh, Taqwa and, and also in our mutual uh, growth. Pioneer missionaries were assigned to the area to nurture the Jamaat at a grassroots level. Over the decades, they assisted in the moral and religious training of Jamaat members and were instrumental in reaching out to the wider community. Mirza Mahmoud Amosai was the first missionary in Texas uh, and a station in Houston. And uh, after three, four years, he served there. Then Hazrat Amil Muminin Khalif al Musil Rabi Rahmulatala appointed me missionary for that region in that area in Houston. And uh, after me, there are a couple of other missionaries by the grace of Allah served that area, like uh, Zafrullah Hanjra Sahib, like Zafar Sarwar Sahib. After Zafrullah Sahib, Bishri Bashar Sahib, and currently Rizwan Khan Sahib is in Houston. He got to Houston at the same time frame four, year, four years ago when they came to Dallas. Through classes, interfaith events, and tabligh activities, their preliminary efforts played a pivotal role in laying the groundwork for future generations. <laughs> अपने जज्बों को महमीज़ कर 
ते चलो रास्ते में वफा के जलाओ दिए और कदम तेज से तेज करते चलो हे चहे राह के पे चम दोस्त तो आगे बढ़ Alongside the efforts of local Jamaat members, undoubtedly, the true progress of the community here is due to the blessings of Khilafat, which continue to inspire and provide guidance to Ahmadi Muslims in the area. The Jamaat was blessed by the visit of a Khalifa for the second time when Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, may Allah be his helper, made a historic visit to Houston in 2018. We were lucky enough to have our present Huzur Ayatollah Taala bin Abdul Aziz in Houston, and the way the whole Jamaat came together, not only it inspires one's life, I think it inspires the whole Jamaat. We suggested some programs for Huzur to do lecture for universities, and 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 a lot of uh, like dignitaries want to do, but Huzur said no. My main purpose here is come to. meet jamaat members and that's what i'm going to do so who's were there the whole time in the mosque and just meeting people from this region that was phenomenal meeting you know and uh, even though I, we have so many things on our mind that we're going to talk to khalifa like that but as soon as we we saw khalifa uh, i mean i forgot everything you know <laughs> what to talk about you know i was just looking at the khalifa and uh, and try to absorb all the all the i uh, think i uh, think nuraniyat you know of uh, of his uh, personality you know very happy event of my life you know and my family as well yeah so many uh, mulaqat during that hazur trip that uh, members from all over the region came over here for mulaqat with hazur so it was a wonderful trip and uh, i'm sure that it will be Uh, on the memories of uh, all our jamaat members for a long time the goal of the ahmadi community is not only to increase in number but also to bring about a positive impact in every area in which it is established the jamaat aims to benefit all people no matter their faith background or social standing we made very good contacts with our local uh, congressmen and senators we participated in muslim for life muslim for peace numerous blood drives on 911 time frame feeding and uh, food distribution for homeless uh, our khudamul ahmadiyya very actively participated in hurricane harvey and did numerous uh, projects in low income areas which made a lot of impact on local population I remember that for s- several weeks on a daily basis there were teams of Qadam and Ansar uh going from uh, Austin Texas to Houston area uh to help out with the d- disaster relief activities people had their homes that had to be gutted and uh they had to be a lot of repair work had to be done Alongside these humanitarian efforts the community is constantly involved in propagating the true teachings of Islam through a variety of means. Uh we hold a number of programs at the University of Texas every year and invite uh, students um to attend those events and those are very well attended. Uh people approach us ask us questions about Islam. Many of these people um have never met a Muslim. so it is their first experience of meeting a muslim the peace loving nature of the emadi uh community is second to none in many many ways second to none and it's not a superficial tolerance you know it's not like hey we want we're going to respect you you have your beliefs and we have similar beliefs and we can see eye to eye you know let's let's shake on it that's great that's tolerance but what we see with the amadia community it's something much more embracing you know rather than say hey we're really similar you give someone a hug and you talk about mutual commonalities um that's very very inclusive the amadia community 
As we have seen through the decades, the Jamaat in Texas has progressed from humble beginnings and inshallah will continue to expand and strengthen under the guidance of Khilafat.